Hello, hello, my love. I hope this finds you doing so well. We are here today to talk with a recent member of the Somatic Studio, my 12-week program all about somatics or body-based practices to reconnect with your beautiful, magical, amazing self. And I'm sharing this conversation because um, back in the day when I was super disconnected from my body, when I was rolling around in all my own emotional outsourcing, I thought I was the only one who was this disconnected. I thought I was just perma effed that there was no hope for me. And I now know that's untrue and that most of us are just mammaling along, right? When life gets lifey and we often disconnect from our bodies as a way to get through, especially for human socializers, women living in white settler colonialism, late stage capitalism, um, and of course the patriarchy. And so I want to share stories of humans who have helped themselves to reconnect with their body so that they may be inspirational for you on your journey. And so I'm very excited to share this conversation. Hello, my love. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Would you so please? Yeah, so excited. We had so <laughs> much fun in the somatic studio, didn't we? Yes. It was such oh, a blast. such a good time. Okay, we're going to dive in. But first, will you please share your name, your pronouns, uh, and where you live in a land acknowledgement? 100%. Uh, my name is Kira. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, I live in the unceded lands of the Duwamish and also Snohomish people, otherwise known as the greater Seattle area. Which has a secret second city under it, that Seattle. Yes, How I did cool that, that tour like when I was 10 or 12 yeah. and not since <laughs> then. So I've forgotten all the details, but it's there somewhere. It's wild. Yeah. So they built Seattle and then it kept flooding. So they were like, oh, JK. And they put like pylons, but like wooden ones. They've since, I think, reinforced it, I hope, and built yeah, a hopefully. city on top of the city. I did that tour maybe 20 years ago and it was really fun and creepy. Yeah, very creepy. I was very a little creepy. bit too young and too <laughs> eager of an imagination to do that to her very comfortably. Mm, like, I had a nightmare for a night or two afterwards. I bet, right? Because <laughs> like, there's there's not not skeletons down there, like legit literal skeletons. Oh, 100%. Mm. Yeah. We didn't talk mm. about the skeletons, but we knew they were Don't there. Don't talk about the skeletons. <laughs> well, that's like literally what the Somatic Studio is all about. Not literally, but figuratively is talking about the skeletons. <laughs> the figurative skeletons. And there we have our segue. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Champion. Well, before we dive into it, I want to know what lights you up. What are you passionate about? Oh, I forgot oh. about this question. Let's see. Uh, what <laughs> lights me up? Um, My... <laughs> Uh, coaching business that's in its first year continues to light me up. I am I'm like constantly just so grateful for my Ooh. lovely, lovely clients. I'm currently lit up by a cozy MMO video game called Palea. What does is... MMO? MMO is... Yeah, monkeys, we're get monkeys, deep, otters! Deep into the nerd tree here. Uh, yeah, we well, can just oh. surface nerd, but... Oh gosh, I'm going to uh -oh. embarrass myself. M mass multiplayer online. There we go. Oh, um, so it's like the... Gracious. like the like world of warcraft is one of the oh. original mmos so it's like you're, you you can goodness. play with strangers on the internet oh, but mostly i right. just play with my wife oh okay great cool <laughs> cool yeah right uh, and puppies puppies light me up and books light me up and somatics light me up oh well that's a delight yeah. yeah so thank you for the excellent segue <laughs> You're welcome. You're, you're, All you're about like, the segues today. I mean, right? Come on now. So you were recently in the Somatic Studio, and I'm curious, what led you to join us? 100%. So I had been like in the thought work sphere for a while um, through Kara's program originally. But, and shout, so out I had, shout out to Kara Lowenthal and, Kyle Lowenthal. and the Clutch. Kara's amazing. amazing. Yep, Still right. in the clutch. Kara's very focused on the like cognitive thought work side of things, which is amazing. It was absolutely where I needed to start. Yeah. My brain had no idea how to look at itself past the standard like talk therapy, tell me about your history, trauma, etc. And I got so far with thought work. It was amazing. I went to one of her like clutch college lives and then I got so into it that by the end people were telling me I needed to be a coach. And so then I started a coaching business. 
And at some point I had an accountability buddy that mentioned your name and the somatics uh, or the feminist wellness podcast. And so I started listening to that too, because of course we're nerds and we're just going to deep dive into everything. Uh, That's what hyperfixation is. (laughs) And I got to this point with thought work where I just like, I had done all of the cognitive work and I was realizing that I had autism for the first time. So I was unmasking and I was figuring out sensory overload and not just anxiety attack that my thoughts made. And I found that I hit this point where the cognitive thought work wasn't helping as much because there was no thought to unpack. (laughs) It was just pure body response. And I got kind of stuck. And so I was thinking about Anchored as, you know, a commitment for the future. Got to save up money. Do I do that? Or do I do, you know, life coach school certification first, et cetera, et cetera. And then just when I was, you know, having an existential crisis about that decision, you announced Somatic Studio. And I was like, well, that's a sign from the universe. I have to do that (laughs) because I need the Somatic Schools specifically. And I want to hang out with Victoria in a room and sold. So yeah, this is to like round out the thought work approach. And it absolutely 100% worked. I love that. So how did you, I heard you say, I knew I needed the somatic stuff. How did you know that? Right. So if someone's listening and they're like, I don't do I need yeah. it. How do I know it? Hundred <laughs> percent. I think the the thing that clicked for me when I was unpacking, especially unmasking for the first time, is that I kept having these experiences where my brain and my body were just not on the same page of like my brain is very convinced that we are safe and my body is very much not feeling safe. And I can't figure out why and I can't figure out how to get to the bottom of, of it. And especially for just like late di- late diagnosed neurodivergent folks that have that is a thing. So it was like this this fight between like my brain who knew all the tools and could apply the thoughts and could apply the thought letters and could apply the model. And then my body was like, but no, we're still we're still going to we're still going to have a meltdown and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> and it's still going to be a terrible experience. So it was like my, my brain and my body were just not on the same page which I mean, we talk a lot about body work and calming your body before the brain work ha- can happen before logic brain comes back online, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So like even just like trying a couple of the somatics tools in the shower, which is my favorite place to do thought work because no one can bug me, was just like grounding my body first made so much of a difference of just like orienting to my surroundings made so much of a difference that I was like, I need, I need more of this. <laughs> this is the key that I was missing. I'm curious if there's an example that might come to you with ease of like doing the thought work, but the body says no. Like, what does that look like? And I have a majillion examples from my life, if if that's helpful. Yeah. Give me your example first so that I have time to think about it. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Yeah. I I mean, let's see. I, I hear this all the time in Anchored of people being like, I truly in my brain believe I'm worthy of love, but that, oh, we were talking about this yesterday in Anchored, that this woman was like, I just want my husband to give me touch that is non-sexual, like Mm -hmm. hugs and pets and pats and like, you know, just like, like I'm a puppy, like, you know what I mean? Just like we are puppies together. Like, I just want that safe connection. And my brain is like, I deserve that. I'm worthy of that. Of course I should get that. But when he doesn't do it, my body goes, oh, I guess it's not for me. And like, I collapse into self. And then the tapes start, right? The, the, I'm not, it's okay. I don't get what I want. It's fine that other people get what they want. I'll never, you know, like all those kind of survival skill stories from childhood. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think my sort of version of that was very much centered around rest Mm. of like I'd done all the thought work of yes I deserve rest and I don't have to have everything crossed off the to-do list I can rest I can watch tv I can play video games I can do whatever I want and then I would sit down to rest and like my inner child and my body would be like no but that's but but danger 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 but But, yes no but mm, right I'm not convinced this is allowed I don't think so (laughs) yeah god that has Uh, been so much of my own work yeah. So getting to the root of those stories of like, where, where is my inner child just like having big opinions or yeah. where did those big opinions come from? Who do I need to care for so mm. that I can allow my body to rest? Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's also been that very much, right. And holding space for my nervous system to reorient to it's, it's, 
I don't want to get too jargony, but right. It's about like uncoupling and overcoupling, right? So rest in my nervous system was very much coupled, connected with unsafety. Yes. hundred percent. Right? And so, right. If I was being, and so therefore the other side of that productivity, proving myself, I'm a good girl. Look, I did the laundry. Look, I did the choice. You didn't even ask me to clean the kitchen, but I cleaned the kitchen. Love me. Please love me. Please, please love me. Please. Right. Yeah. All that little girl stuff was way over coupled, right. Being lovable and, and tap dancing for my lovability. Woo. Yeah. Right. So then of course, of course, productivity was my like, oh my God, safe place focus. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to do like a little loop to like the attachment stuff here. Then in my relationships, way over functioning. What if I just did all the things for you so that then you could love me? But can I do more things and then you'll love me better? Right. And then wait, but then what happens if they don't love the thing you did? Oh, then we're going to have a whole spiral in a corner. That's bad. That mm, I am dangerous and unlovable. Exactly. I'm broken. I am broken (laughs) because you didn't actually want me to do that, wash that thing for you. Can I I fix all your feelings for you? Can I just like, you won't have to ever have a human experience while you're dating me? No? Yeah. No? Wait a second. Yeah. Someone I I love from a very loving place. And if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, shit at me damn it I peace love compassion curiosity care right all the things we talk about I didn't know I was doing it Kira did you know you're doing this god no <laughs> absolutely not I, I was no helping idea. I was just, I was helping of course we that's were... how I mean let's talk about how we learned all those patterns from our parents like by I shout out I'm sure my parents will listen to this I love you very much you're doing the work you're you're, you're, you're amazing and yes. also and also. codependency is a learned pattern 100% <laughs> hundred percent. Not a disease, not a permanent label. It is a learned survival skill. And what a skill it is though. Like let's pause. We talk about that so much in the somatic studio and we talk about it in anchor. We talk about it here that like all these skills are freaking brilliant. Yeah. They keep you safe. Yeah. I mean, the experience of them sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they're just self-love actualized in these really painful ways. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think especially as like growing up with someone who had autism and didn't realize it. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I am different from other people and I can't put my finger on why. So if I just like overcommit and overperform all of the time, then maybe people will give me the love that I don't feel like I can get because I am different and wrong and broken. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'll just try harder and ignore myself more. Yeah. 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 And so it's no wonder we end up somatically, you know, in the functional freeze I talk so much about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, it sounds like you resonate with the concept of functional freeze. Can you share a little bit about, okay, cool. Like (laughs) what that looks like and has looked like for you? Because I, yeah. I talk about, you know, I try to always give examples, but it's so different to hear it from someone else. From somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I'm playing and I'm like unpacking some of this with my clients as well, because I think functional freeze is also like sort of what people think is autism. And I think there's a lot of overlap there, which is super fascinating. So there's Mm. the sort of stereotype of autistic folks kind of not having feelings or at least not knowing Uh how like alexithymia is a word that's thrown around of like not knowing how to conceptualize and talk about your emotions and there is some some truth to that within the disorder absolutely like brains are weird brains do weird things but I think another huge part of it is that especially as like high masking neurodivergent folks I've I've learned lessons my entire life about how my feelings are wrong and bad and the incorrect reaction. And so I entered this place for the first however many decades of my life of like, I can't feel because then I will be judged and then I will be unsafe and then I will be ostracized. So instead, I'm just going to never feel anything until it's 11 p.m. and everyone has gone to bed and then I can maybe like sob about everything that happened during the day. But until then... I am only ahead. My body does not exist because my body is unsafe. And that's, I mean, that's where I lived <laughs> kind of constantly until I started thought work, until I started Somatic Studio, especially, which is, it's been 
just the greatest gift and also the wildest and most overwhelming experience to start to tune back into my body and be like, what feelings are actually there? I'm not sure. Is that safe? So lots, lots of grounding has had to happen of just like reminding myself that I am safe. And that has always been a theme for me. Yeah. It's so interesting. This, this always happens when I am first introducing folks to somatic practice folks really want a lot of things to do. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that moment? Like week six, someone was like, excuse me, I need more things to do. I need more tools. These tools, tools. aren't working enough. Right. The 12 tools you've given us that I'm not practicing aren't working enough. And I get it. That's all I wanted at first. Right. I yeah. wanted to be in that productivity cycle of like, let me wake up in a functional freeze, which means you know, you're functional in the world, but you're disconnected from self in this profound way. Let me do stuff. I feel a little called out. <laughs> yeah, we were starting with me. Thank you. We were calling me out, but okay. uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll call uh, you out next. Yeah. Of course, we want stuff to do. Think about when and where we live, right? And and earlier I said late stage capitalism, but an economist friend recently corrected me that we're actually in neo feudalism. Ooh. Right, because we there are so many billionaires now that we are actually in this neo feudal state in relation to the Bezos and you know and the Tesla guy. We're gonna not even you know <laughs> we don't have to go too deep there. We don't need to. We all know who we're talking about. But my yeah. point is, those frameworks teach us that productivity is everything, and that the point of being a human is to do do do. And so, of mm -hmm. course, we come to somewhere like the Somatic Studio that's about healing that and all we want to do is like okay I did I did I counted my fingers I did this in my arm I did the figure eight I did the tongue roll I did why is it not more better give me more right. to did <laughs> if I just keep didding forever <laughs> then eventually I will hit a point where I am healed and magic and I will right. never have to feel sad again plot twist mm. sorry guys it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work that way <laughs> here to tell you uh, Victoria is amazing, but she's not that much of a miracle worker. You are still a human. Spoiler <laughs> alert. If you walked into the somatic studio, human, human, you shall walk out. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really is so much about the being with. Yeah. And they're just like sitting with even the uncomfortable right. feelings, not trying to run away from them. Collectively, we need new skills and tools to be able to do that. Yeah. I can't. Yes. A hundred percent. I think before I was in this course, I didn't, because I didn't have the tools, if I sat down to be healed, feel an uncomfortable emotion, like I could brute force my way through it probably, but it's not a comfortable <laughs> experience. It's not good right. for me. And then I'm having this pattern where I'm like not trusting my brain and I'm making things feel more unsafe in my body. Right. That's not going to get me to the place I want to go. No. So what do you do now? I'm still working on it because of course yeah. it's a lifelong process. Integration sure, is slow. Sure. But when I remember that somatics tools exist, <laughs> <laughs> I think the most powerful tool for me has just been like orienting myself back to my environment. I think mm. that was especially the part that I was missing. Like I was always looking inward. I was always trying to understand what was happening in my body, but I like just got so focused on my body that I like lose where I am in the world and then it's really hard to feel safe if I am like feeling ungrounded basically mm. so first step now when I'm feeling this like activation or brain fog or brain shutdown or functional freeze when I'm at a place that I can unpack it is to sit down do the we've talked about the like looking left to right flossing the phrenic nerve is my new favorite mm. tool and all my yeah. clients know about it now oh yeah uh, <laughs> floss that phrenic nerve my nerds oh yeah. it's so good <laughs> and just like taking in my environment and especially grabbing the like glimmers that make me happy in my environment so I started doing this work and realized that I'm very happy in our like hobby room office area because I've like covered it and like little knickknacks that I love it's so cute and then I went to my bedroom and I was like these walls are too blank i only see clothes on the floor this is a problem oh. so now we have to redo our whole bedroom <laughs> oh, <I laughs> so that it. i can ground better but it needed to happen so that like grounding in my environment is beautiful and then i have a lot of conversations with my inner kiddos these days 
I hit the point in like week 10 of somatic studio where my inner kids were just like always talking like the three-year-old toddler just like and I was like this is a lot but they forgot like 20 something years to to catch up on because I haven't been listening for that long so yeah right now we're riding the storm of inner kiddo having big feelings about how my wife can play video games but I gotta be busy (laughs) yeah yeah i know there are people listening who are like wait what do you mean you can hear your inner children what does that mean what does that mean for you and how did you right how has this somatic practice and this work we've been doing together how has that supported you in being able to hear yeah that's such an interesting question and something I'm playing with with my clients because looking at your inner children is slightly different for everybody. I think the key for me was getting to the point where, you know, if we were talking about a learned pattern like people pleasing or like being anxious attachment in my friendships, I can usually trace that back to a formative moment of, oh, the mean girls in sixth grade or, oh, that one thing that my dad said that one time. And once I trace it back to that thing, then I have this like image in my brain of, the, little, the, the kid that I was at that point, whether it was 12, mm. 3, 5. Mm-hmm. And if I'm thinking about that experience that informed me that coded in my brain as a small trauma, then like, I really have to talk to the inner kiddo and like, sit down and have a conversation, like squat down on the floor and have a conversation with that little five-year-old and be like, mm. did you know that maybe you're safe? <laughs> mm. Did you know that maybe 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 you coded that wrong and your dad does still love you (laughs) yeah and I think the like any of the big like really uncomfortable feelings for me stem back to like five-year-old lizard brain is having a meltdown about its (laughs) self-worth yeah 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 significance and belonging right yeah two core components of safety and when those are over and under coupled with the rest of the world, they need a lot of tenderness and love from us to be able to shift. Yeah. yeah. I love that work. And I love those examples you shared. Yeah. And we can, from there, continue to show up. Once we've established that baseline trust with our littles, with our parts, we can, we can show up and continue to hold somatic space for them right? So a big thing, you know, we did this in the somatic studio, and this has been a big thing I've been doing in my own work and with my clients is finding just the edge of the feeling. Ooh, yeah. And just holding the edge energetically, just hold the edge. And then I just start sobbing. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Uh And I don't even need to really cognitively know what's up. I just get to trust. And this is that, tra- yeah, that trust part that I trust that my nervous system is resetting. Yeah. That's such an interesting parallel to like, if you're approaching the work of like grounding back into your body and your body is not feeling safe, then it's safer to just touch yeah. the perimeter instead of going deep in. It's safer oh. to just feel my seat on the chair than to like feel my guts inside me oh my gosh absolutely. Um, so it makes a hundred percent sense that if I'm thinking about big emotion that's uncomfortable to look at head on then if I just touch the perimeter yep it's easier to get my hands around it figure it right out, well because one of the huge things that's one of the things that's so vital in this work and is why you know I'm so stoked that we are collectively talking about stress distress and trauma and somatics and like it's like hashtag trending And I get really nervous, right? When the reels come up and it's like, do this somatic thing. We need to titrate. You know, we talk a lot about this in the studio. We can't, we, I shall not go faster, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I took an oath above all, do no harm. Yeah. And the nervous system needs slowness. And I think that's part of the important part of why a community like this is so important, especially when you're starting this work. Like, I don't know where my boundaries are. I don't know where my limits are. And it's so easy to just like blow past them into full meltdown range. But being like held in a community and having a wonderful teacher like helps to feel out the boundaries and the like felt safety when my body is not capable of telling me its limits yet. 
Yeah, for sure. Because the last thing we want to do is flood our nervous system. Yeah. Right. And get like, do that all the time. And it's not, it's not, it's not great. (laughs) Yeah. I getting actually triggered is, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't been actually triggered in, in, I'm glad to say in like quite a while and and something happened a couple of weeks ago and I was like, Oh snap. Like I was watching myself dissociate and I, cause I have enough resourcing and groundedness and skills. I mean, I've been doing this work for 20 years now, right? Just, that's also wild. But like <laughs> my inner watch or my medial frontal cortex, you know, my favorite part of the brain, and watching this like part of me dissociate. And I was like, oh, snap. Like yeah. I'm getting actually legit for reals triggered right now. Like what just happened flooded my nervous system. And it was fascinating to watch it. And I'm just, both so grateful that I had the resourcing to be able to step in and to go back to to how we do what we do and, and this work must be slow because when we overactivate the nervous system, all work stops, right? The when brain in- shuts down when we are in freeze mode at the end. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think it's important to note for the folks listening at home, let's highlight the fact that you have been doing this for 20 years of like, I am not at that point yet. I will get there, but I like, I can sometimes see myself dissociating for like Mm. two seconds. And then the rest of my brain's like, okay, bye. (laughs) We're just going to ride this wave of freeze until we feel a little bit more safe. So like that awareness comes with time and then actually being able to do something about it to change that pattern takes much longer, but it's, yeah, it's so worth it. And, and, you know, we're neither one of us is in the business of shortcuts and there are some pretty great shortcuts, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. right. And, and so you brought up the community and I, I feel like community, it's not a shortcut, but it is. I think the, like, uh, the part of the, this community, especially that acts as basically a, a little baby shortcut for your nervous system is that when you aren't ready to give yourself compassion for your human patterns and your human brain, someone else is there to do it for you. And that was so beautiful about this community. You know, I'm very familiar with coaching coaching communities. I've been in the clutch for several years at this point. And having that be coaching focused community is amazing. Pure coaching helps me move forward in thought work. It's not, it's not as effective for body work because I can tell someone I like, I can tell someone to calm down and they're not, and they're not gonna, that's not, that's not how bodies work. So like having this space just be a space where people hold you and see you and validate you. And like, I think I had a couple posts of just like, I am very upset about a thing and I can't, I'm not at a place where I can rant to anyone who is in my life because they're going to get activated too, because they don't know this work. So instead I'm going to scream at you guys just so that I can be seen. And then I would receive so much compassion and so much just like, you are so loved. You and me both, baby. Human brain's gonna human brain. And also you are safe. And also this community is here for you when you cannot be there for yourself was so freaking life-changing and gave me the blueprint for how to give myself kindness. That last part made me really teary in a sweet Aww. way. The Somatic Studio community gave me a blueprint for how to give myself kindness. Yeah. Aww. Aww. It was very tender. It's like very tender ravioli. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely had a PhD in giving everyone the love, care, and tenderness I wanted. Yeah. That goes back to like overacting as a friend so that I can give other people kindness and maybe they'll give me that kindness back. Maybe. But nowhere in there did I ever give myself the kind of stuff I was giving other people. Well, no, we were very busy. Yeah. Got to do yeah. other things. I don't have time for compassion. No, don't be silly. Yeah, probably I can have compassion when I finish the to-do list. Yeah. And the to-do list is mostly having compassion for everyone. I'm sure, I'm sure he didn't mean to yell at me. I'm sure she didn't mean to stand me up. I'm sure... Which I know we've talked about on both podcasts and Somatic Studio before, but like I 
can try my best to give other people compassion. But if I'm judging myself the whole time, it gets a lot harder to judge, not judge someone for road rage. And I get yeah. role activated and I'm not even showing yeah. up for my friends with as much compassion as I want to if I am constantly hustling for my worth and for my lovability. Right. right. And just to go back to, I, I'll do a whole show about coupling and un, un, under couplings. It's, <laughs> it's actually like super freaking complicated, but when we are just performing our feelings, they are under coupled to our lived experience. They're not connected. Mm -hmm. It's a performance. Right. So when you're on stage and you're Hamlet, you're what you know what I mean? You're you're performing the feeling, but you're not really you are not really having the feeling. Yeah. It's just like another mask. Yeah. Which is a big yeah. theme in my life of yeah. just like same way as I can like mask to pretend to be a neurotypical person and a neuro neurotypical person is having a conversation with me. Like that's not they can tell that that's not authentic, that I'm not really getting the social cue and the eye contact. And I'm try trying to like overperform to make the thing happen. The same thing kind of happens in friendships of like other people's brains and nervous systems can tell the difference between actually here coupled with my body and trying to perform it. It, it feels different, not just to you, but to the people you're around. Yeah. And so when we can be in a space where we can co-regulate our nervous systems, because everyone's showing up to the somatic studio being like, hot mess express? Did anyone else? <laughs> how, how did you get here? Did you? Oh, you took the six train. I took the hot mess express. Pardon me. <laughs> Pardon me. You uh -huh. know, like there's this shared level of vulnerability. You know? Yeah. That lets us have that empathy and compassion in a real way for us others which starts to couple the concept of compassion and safety mm -hmm. like maybe it is safe to actually feel compassion for them in a real way and not just performatively and so then that opens begins to open the door to do it for ourselves yeah i love that so much that's 100 percent true that's so good yeah and that's why this work has to be in community Oh, so yeah, one on one is important. It's it's there's a time and a place, but I feel like these big shifts for me happen when I do this in a collective. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful part of a collective is that it gives you so much proof that you are not the only one. <laughs> right? Like I can do this one on one with a coach all day, and then they'll be like, "But I also have this human brain," and I was like, mm, "No, but mm. you're the teacher and you're the guru, and like, no, I don't believe it. I think you might just be an amazing god." Right. <laughs> and then I do right. this in a community and I'm like oh, oh other people also have human brains and maybe I don't have to believe that I'm broken yeah yeah that's true that's so beautiful yeah yeah hey so what's what's changed for the better now after the somatic mm. studio how's your life so yeah. much so much and it's only the beginning because we're only like what two weeks out yeah I think what's been <laughs> on the like very action line logistical side of things I have finally started looking at top surgery and testosterone which has been a big emotion filled experience for me uh, it's big change it's big scary and it was really funny that like I just hadn't looked at it at all it was too big it was too scary and then three months in somatic studio and I'm just like did it one day and was like, oh, now we're on the, now we're on this ride. Okay. So just like, I'm still noticing all the ways that it's like integrating itself into my life of just like bigger things that I can take on and feel all the big feelings that come with them without just like completely shutting down and giving up and taking three weeks off. Yeah. Which is especially important while I am, you know, building a business and have a day job and do roller derby and I'm a partner and I'm also transitioning and <laughs> like it's a lot. And I think before Somatic Studio, I was just like overwhelmed and frozen in my brain. Like I was very much functional free, still doing all the things. And now I am, the day job will take a little longer because being around people who don't know this work is a little bit harder to show up for myself, but in my personal life, I am already finding it easier to say no to things that I don't want to do. I started saying no to the derby commitments that I don't have space for. I 
when I like am getting activated by something my partner is doing, I am it's much more easily just like going to the other room and grounding myself and then also having the language to come back and be like hey remember how I talked about nervous systems and ventral vagal yeah so I was in dorsal vagal and I promise it's not your fault but also let's talk about how to not have this happen in the future (laughs) please and thanks so just like having that language and that level of awareness is already making such a huge difference in my relationships and in like unpacking all of my other stuff and now I'm even taking it to my clients. Like I'm already helping clients with somatic like based practices and body scans, which is not a thing I would have felt comfortable walking someone through before. And it's beautiful timing. One of my clients is going through a huge health thing right now. And so just like giving him the safety to do a body scan and feel grounded in his body has been life-changing, not just for me, but for the people around me. And that's like, I could keep talking about all the things that are different for another 10 minutes, but... <laughs> Just like, it's just sneaking its way into every little, every little corner of my life and making everything so much better. Oh, it feels so beautiful to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like, um, what was that saying? When one of us heals, we help heal the world. Was that weird? Some like this one time. Yeah, some person said that. I don't know who. Like, did I hear it like 260 some odd weeks in a row? (laughs) Yeah. It's like legit, right? When we are regulated, we are more open to others. We're kinder to others. We're more, we can have like for real, actual compassion. Yeah. Empathy, care. It's showing up so physically in my life right now that like I had started the business and then I had hit my limit of how much I could handle while also doing a day job. And I just, we, we stalled towards our like, my goal is to have 10 clients by the end of the year. And I got three and then my nervous system was like, that's enough. We're done now. No more. (laughs) I'm tired. And so like literally my capacity to heal the world was limited by my own capacity. And so being able to do this work is like very, very obviously. I think about it every time I get on a call. I think about your motto of like, I have to heal myself before I can heal the world. And now our social media is up. We're making progress. (laughs) I love it. Healing the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you started with you because you deserve it. Heck yeah, I do. Yeah, you tell them. I deserve all all of the love. I can rest whenever I want. Yeah, whenever. Whenever. It's true, though. Yeah, and I'm glad that you have some new safety internally around rest. Yeah. It's pretty impressive and important and amazing. Yeah. Oh, you're so inspiring. Listen, I think we could have a 16 hour conversation Come and we probably on. should, I should like have you back in six months and we'll see how are things going and in a year and see mm-hmm. like, how does this continue to ripple out into your life? And for now, before we go, is there anything else you want the good people to know about the somatic studio, about why somatic practice matters? I mean, we've, we've talked about it, but anything else pending or if someone's like, I'm nervous, should I do this thing? Yeah. What would you say to that? Yeah. I know about the like big source of anxiety for everybody, myself included, is the money. And, you know, late stage capitalism, neo feudalism, not withstanding money is complicated. Do what makes sense and what is safe for you and your budget. And also, this can feel like a really big expense for people who haven't learned how to spend money on themselves ever, especially people socialized as women. We don't need to go into that whole thing. But <laughs> the benefits that you will get for your investment are a hundred to thousand percent worth it and i think and now we're going to get a little mushy the community especially that victoria is able to build with her own just like safety and love and compassion for her and her kiddos is unparalleled i haven't been able to find anything else like it so far so if you need the care and compassion and you can't give it to yourself, this is 100% the place for you. Mushy, mushy, sweet feelings over here, too. It's Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a whole journey of yeah. loving my myself so that I can have that coupled, appropriately coupled loving of others. Yeah. It's been a whole journey. Yeah, I'm really grateful to be here and to get to love you and all my clients with from such a deep place in my heart, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
And now I get to do the work too. And then I, I go out and heal more people. And then they go out and heal more people. Yeah. So good. Hey, listen, everyone listening wants to follow you on social media and learn all about you. How can yes, they do it? Please. We oh, talked about right. how I've just made my social media account so two days ago so that so I can inspired. do the thing. Well done. Um, I've already been on TikTok for a bit. That was my okay. like first content. So I'm at Joyful Divergent on TikTok. Cute. And also Joyful Divergent on Facebook and Instagram now. Right now they have one post, but they will have more posts than that by the time this podcast comes out. And if you can't remember all those things, my website is also JoyfulDivergence.com and it will be linked to all my social medias. We went for solid branding and I'm that. here for it. Yeah. And even if I'm not your coaching niche, every every like and follow helps. So yeah, give me all the love. Yeah. I want it. Give them the love. Can reach more people. Give them the love. Oh, you're such a love bear. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This was yeah. so much fun. It was so much fun. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. 100%. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of Feminist Wellness. Kira is a fantastic human, as are all the humans in the Somatic Studio, and as are you. Thank you for listening. It is such an honor and a delight uh, and a privilege, really, to get to share this information that has so radically changed my own experience of being a human in this life. And I'm so endlessly grateful for all my teachers who have taught me uh, and guided me and supported me towards ever greater somatic presence, bodily presence, uh, out of functional freeze and back home to myself. It's a wild gift. I'm grateful for it. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to share it with all of you here and in the Somatic Studio. If you want to learn more, you can head over to victorialbinum.com slash the Somatic Studio. I know, pretty complicated on that URL. I'm trying to keep it confusing. <laughs> Join us. If you feel moved to uh, be more present in your body, in your life, in your relationships, in your parenting and yeah, just being you. Join us. It's it's a darn good time. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of crying. I'll just tell you this up front. There's a lot of crying, but it's really beautiful crying. It's the kind of crying that has the capacity and the power to help heal the nervous system and rewrite those neural tracks in your mind. That's a pretty groovy thing. All right, my nerds, thank you for being here. Let's do what we do. Gentle hand on your heart should you feel so moved. And remember, you are safe, you are held, you are loved. And when one of us heal, we help heal the world. Be well, my beauty. I'll talk to you soon. Mwah. Ciao. Thank you for listening to this episode of Feminist Wellness. If you want to learn more all about somatics, what the heck that word means and why it matters for your life, head on over to victoriaalbina.com slash somatics webinar for a free webinar all about it. Have a beautiful day, my darling, and I'll see you next week. Ciao.